Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today, Jesus loved all kinds of people. And Jesus, he often associated himself with those that others did not like so much. Uh, he associated with those that others would look at him and turn up their noses. But see, the thing about it is, is that Jesus changed lives by this love that he had for all people. And he, he transformed how people felt, and he transformed how people behaved. See, see Jesus he offered mercy and he, he, he offered forgiveness. And because yeah. of that, we should be demonstrating this same unconditional love to one another. Like I said in the beginning, it gives me great honor to be able to be amongst all of you as my brothers and sisters of Christ, especially during a time like what we're in right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and it feels like all of the things that are going on in the media, that we're going to be experiencing even more of a pandemic come November the 3rd. This is a time when we cannot lose sight, we cannot lose focus of who God is and what God can do. And the reason why I say that is because over the past several months, all we've seen is this political party you know, facing off with this political party. We've seen where we've had our own friends, some family, some coworkers amongst us and things like that. And I look on social media and I begin to see how people are calling other people by names. I see how people are turning their backs on each other and all of these things. This is not the love that Jesus has called on us and demanded and commanded us to display in our lives. We are to be Christ-like. So the focus on this lesson is going to, again, show us uh, how Jesus loved all kinds of people, no matter what their backgrounds were, no matter uh, 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 what their, their attitudes or their behaviors uh, were. Uh, again, we're, we're here in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 19, and, and, and tonight we're going to be talking about the kids. Uh, as many of you know, the kids is, uh, 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 explained in the text, he, he was a short little fellow as a man, but that was not his only problem. The thing about the kids was the fact that the kids was a tax collector. And during this particular time, during Jesus' day, uh, a tax collector was, was pretty much very unpopular to the people. Uh, uh, basically what this tax collector did was they basically, they robbed the people. These, these tax collectors could come around and make people pay money, uh, and, and, but the thing about it is they made them pay more than they actually owed. But see, then what the tax collectors would do, they would take the money and put the money in the pockets themselves. So we see here with this, this, these tax collectors, they were very deceitful, uh, they were very greedy, and there was not much that the people at the time could do about it. But, however, we see that Zacchaeus uh, was one of those tax collectors. Uh, and as a result, the Jews were not a big fan of his. See, because Zacchaeus, he had risen to the top, and he had gained some authority over his fellow Jews uh, by being a loyal servant unto the Romans. Uh, see, He's similar to many we have today in our own political system uh, who have obtained wealth and obtained a high status in the political system. They've obtained a, a high prestige uh, that's looked at by the world's eye as being successful. But what we have to continue to understand is that what the world sees in their eyes is not the same as what God sees for his people. Now, we see here when we, we, when we look at the text here in the, 
in, in the first couple of verses, it says that he, Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and, 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 and was rich. So not only, you know, was Zacchaeus uh, uh, this rich tax collector, this swindling tax collector, uh, uh, he was one of the bosses. He was one of the chiefs. And, and he had accumulated so much money over the period of time in dealing with the people. But still today, we still have some, like I've said before, that are in some of these similar same positions when we began to start talking about uh, lawyers, when we began to start talking about federal agents and, and certain officers of the court and things of this, uh, of, of, of this such. But here, in this particular text, as the text goes on, we see that Zacchaeus, this tax collector, this, this, this greedy and deceitful man in the act that he carried out, all of a sudden wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. And in the text, it points out to us as we continue to read on, starting at verse 3, it says, and he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. Now, Zacchaeus, all of a sudden, here's Zacchaeus, and he's wanting to see Jesus, but he was short. Well, the thing about the fact that he was short it caused him to have to improvise, and that's exactly what he did. But when I read this text, I see a man, I see a man of emptiness that had heard God's word, which drew him closer because his actions indicated he was in a bad situation. But remember, he apparently, he apparently had it all. Because he was rich, and he had so much wealth. He had money that he had been taken from his own people. Well, I believe, and just like many of us, including me, the kids recognized his need. Uh, he had a spiritual emptiness, and he knew that our Lord and Savior he had heard about could meet his need. Now the thing about it is, and that we have to understand is that this 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 tax collector who was living a certain way, he was living out a certain life that wasn't pleasing to God. But however, the text shows us that 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 Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. Now the thing about it is, is that Zacchaeus wanted to hear Jesus because Zacchaeus had heard about. Jesus. That is one of the most greatest things that, 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 that can be done is the fact that he heard about a man named Jesus. And see, that tells us also here that the good news was continuing to be spread throughout the land. The good news is still continuing to be spread throughout Atlanta, Georgia right now by St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church. This is one of the things that Pastor has been doing for months and months and months since we've been experiencing this pandemic. Because I'm sure that there are many that are out there that may be similar to how this tax collector is that needs to hear about a man named Jesus. But here we see that the spiritual emptiness that 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 this that this man Zacchaeus had. And it reminds me of when you go back and you look in the Gospel of John and you look at chapter 6, uh, verse 44, and it says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. To me, this is what Zacchaeus was experiencing. See, God at some point, he was working on Zacchaeus' heart, and I'm sure he's working on many still today, exposing people of their spiritual need. But see, we as children of God just need to keep on sharing the good news. 
Uh, this text here that we're looking at tonight, it continues to remind me of a time in my own life when I had to set aside my own pride, when I had to set aside my own wants, and when I had to set aside my own desires and seek the Lord with that same enthusiasm as Zacchaeus had. Because when we look here at verses 5 and 6 and we see what it says, it says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So guess what Zacchaeus did? The text says, so he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. Now, see, I'm glad that I did what I did because back in 2016, God called me from that sycamore tree. I, I couldn't run from my calling any longer because God had been working already in my heart. See, there's some of you on with us tonight. And in this world right now, being called down from that tree, there's, there's some of us that are still being called down to leave some things behind. There are some of us still being called down from that tree of addiction. There are some of us still being called down to leave behind abusive relationships. There are some of us still being called down from a tree of a bad situation. There are some of us still being called down from that tree of, of being a part of a cult. There are some of us still being called down uh, from that tree uh, to leave behind fornication, to leave behind adultery, and to leave behind anything that is not of God's will. And see here, we see that this is what took place with Zacchaeus here in chapter 19, because he was doing wrong amongst the people. He was taking money from them. He, he, he was taking what they needed in their everyday lives to provide for them and their families. But all of a sudden, we see here in the text that he heard. He heard about Jesus. And this here, it must have been uh, 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 curious for him to learn more about our miracle worker. So what did he choose to do? He ran ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree to see who it was that was passing by. Now, the thing about it is, and some of the amazing details in this particular lesson is that, that are taking place here is that Zacchaeus, again, this short man climbing up a tree to see the Jewish teacher he's heard about. Uh, he, he, he probably thought he, he was hiding himself. And he, he probably thought that, 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 that Jesus didn't know he was there. He probably didn't know uh, 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 what he was doing. But Jesus, he knew better because the text tells us that he looked straight up at the man and called out his name. Not only that, but then the text says that he invited him over for dinner. Now, that is very powerful in this text tonight. Even though Zacchaeus was trying to do things his own way, all alone, Jesus knew. Jesus knows every hair on our head. Jesus is, 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 is very powerful and knows all things. God is the one that created all things, and he gave everything his name. And he called out Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus as he was hiding up in this tree. But then the text goes on, and as God called on him, we see here where the text says, so he, he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. See, verse 6 here tells us that when a person receives the gospel, they respond with repentance, and they respond with restitution. Because verse 7, it says, but when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a, great, uh, to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Now, when we look at that particular text, when it says, and when they saw it, they all grumbled. Before 
we got to where we are tonight, I made the comment about what we are experiencing right now in our world, the, the, the division amongst people because of what the world views and what it has caused us to do to one another. But see, here we see in the text that even when Jesus was carrying out his work, it really began to show just who his friends were because it says that they grumbled as to what it was that he was doing. Now, we remember that Zacchaeus was, 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 was this kind of bad guy in the eyes of the Jews, and, and, and they were not pleased here we see now with Jesus because he was associating with him. So what they began to do was complain. But fortunately, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he was not after public opinion. Jesus was after the individual's heart. He was after his heart. He was after his heart to heal this man. And in this particular case, it worked. Because the text continues to go on and it says that then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. See, we have to continue to understand that Jesus was not worried about how others viewed him. He knew that his mission came from God and that it involved loving all people and not just some people. He also knew change was possible for all and that he would grant forgiveness to all who ask. See, Zacchaeus was transformed by this encounter that he had with Jesus. He got up and promised that if he had done any dishonest dealing towards anyone, he would repay it with extra. Now, I don't know about you all, but I'm sure that there have been times that, that that we have done some wrong towards some others. And and, and and we may have repented. We we may have confessed of our sins and even asked for forgiveness. But how many of us can honestly say that we have repaid them fourfold? And we are children of God. There are children of God still today living a life that is not acceptable to Christ. So we have to continue to remember, as children of God, there's a certain way as to how we are to carry ourselves. Because we see here where Zacchaeus carried himself a certain way at one point. But when he heard about a man named Jesus, and when he seeked the Lord, he was transformed and he changed. See, because we know that all of the things and the money that Zacchaeus had accumulated, it probably was a lot of money. But see, he realized he had found something that was more important than prestige. He had found something that was more important than wealth uh, of money. He had, he had found something that was more important than his, his political status. See, Zacchaeus became a new man and received the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior Christ. Jesus Christ. And Jesus emphasized that he did not uh, uh, he did not come just for good people. And that's what's so amazing about our God. But he came also for those who were truly lost and in a need of healing. See, this is uh, uh, good news for all of us because because I'm sure that some of us may even be still lost right now. Some of us may be still in some situations that we need help getting out. See, this story here has a very uh, important and good element in it because 
Jesus, he loved everyone. So what does that mean for us, children of God? It, 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 it shows us and it means that we are to continue to demonstrate love and forgiveness. Some people still do wrongful things and need consequences. But we know that love and mercy is possible for everyone because that's what God thinks so, and so should we. Because we see here what God did with Zacchaeus' life. We see that Zacchaeus lived one way. But I can only imagine how Zacchaeus' his day went after he went through this encounter with Jesus. I can only imagine as to how he probably thought and looked back and, and, just, and just the effects his decision to climb a tree on that day would change his life. He, he was just a small man, but he had a huge need. He, he was spiritually empty. But when he got up that morning or whatever day it was, he probably didn't have no idea how his life was going to change because of that encounter that he had with Jesus. But the most an honorable thing that we have to continue to praise our Lord and Savior for is what he did for this man, Zacchaeus. See, God took him, and he took his pride. He took Zacchaeus' pride, and he replaced it with humility. He took his selfishness, and he replaced it with generosity. See, Zacchaeus had been a, a, a thief in the night, but he replaced all these people with an abundance because the kids gave back to them fourfold. He took Zacchaeus' uh, despised reputa reputation and, and he replaced it with joy and purpose because it says as, 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 as Jesus looked up to him in that tree and he called him down, the kids came down filled with joy. He took Zacchaeus' failures and replaced them with significance. He took Zacchaeus' sins and replaced them with salvation. See, the gospel, the text, the word of God, it's a simple message, but it has some incredible results if we just continue to abide by each and every word that is written in this book. See, salvation came to Zacchaeus when he recognized his need. Then, as he recognized his need, he responded to Jesus' invitation, and then he received Jesus gladly. But not only that, he repented of his sin. And by this, these four R's that I just called out, recognized, responded, received, and repented, resulted in a changed life for Zacchaeus. I'm going to stop right there tonight. It looks like I'm right at the uh, 7.30 mark. But I hope that each of you receive a message from the Lord on tonight as to how we as people of God are continue to love one another, no matter our status, no matter the color of our skin, no matter what part of uh, uh, society we live in. We have to continue to do God's will. Let us pray. Dear and gracious Heavenly Father God, I come to you on tonight, Father God, once again to say thank you. Father God, I thank you, Lord Father God, for just, just allowing me, Lord Father God, to just share your word on tonight. Father God, I pray, Lord God, for each and every family on this phone line and on Zoom line tonight, Lord Father God, that you just continue to cover them, Lord Father God. Continue to protect them, Lord God, from all harm, danger, even us in sickness, Lord Father God. Father God, we continue to lift up our pastor, Lord Father God, to you, Lord Father God. We pray, Lord Father God, that you just strengthen each and every minister, Lord Father God, that we'll be preaching this week, Lord Father God, starting on tomorrow, Lord. Father God, we ask you right now, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Father God, to bless each and every one of us, Lord, Father God. We thank you and we honor you and we love you. And it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.